Okay guys, so welcome back and we are now reviewing the Codex Supplement Ultramarines courtesy of Games Workshop. I like this book and I don't like it. So this is a very honest review. I don't like it because if you play Ultramarines you need this and Codex Space Marines. What I do like though is the fact that the Ultramarines have actually got a Codex. Uh, very, very similar to the way that the Blood Angels, Space Wolves and so forth have. Um, with just their units in though, however. So, we'll have a look and see what's going on with this and, yeah, basically give you my thoughts. So, the first thing I want to point out is normally if you are a successor chapter, in particular, Blood Angels suffer from this. So, Flesh Terrors can't use any of the relics. Well, now you can because there's two separate... Uh, pages of relics. We've got the relics of McCrag, which specific ultramarines can take from, and we've got special issue war gear, which if you are a successor chapter of the ultramarines, you can take your relics from there. So there's about 12 to 15 relics across the two uh, different pages, which is pretty cool. We've got a full complement of six warlord traits. Uh, we've got all the same chapter tactics as in Codex Space Marines. We've actually got uh, 16 stratagems. Um, we've got specific tactical objective cards. And we've got the Indominus Discipline for Psychic Powers. Uh, so it actually states that librarians can either draw from um, the Librarius or Obscuration, depending on if you're a four-boss librarian or not, or you can go off this table instead. So there's a host of six powers there. So the big thing that people are going to be asking, Bobby G. Yes, he has changed. He is 350 points. He does not give reroll failed wounds anymore. He gives reroll failed wounds of a one. What he does do now is reroll hit rolls. So no failed hit rolls, just hit rolls which means you can re-roll um, those, those misses uh, after the modifiers. Uh, another thing about him as well is his Hand of Dominion is now damage 4. That's, you know, that's pretty big. Uh, he was already a bit of a beast anyway, uh, but, you know, that's pretty good because I think, you know, there was no reason to never attack with the Emperor's Sword. Um, now you kind of got a valid reason to use the Hand of Dominion. Uh, so I like that change a lot. Other than that, I can't see anything else that's changed. The other entries in this book are specific Ultramarine characters uh, and units. Um, so I hope that going forward with the rest of the supplements that do this specifically. So for example, uh, the Dark Angel one will have like the, uh, is it the Night Shroud, Death Shroud, something like that. The Blue Angels one will hopefully get, uh, you know, the Death Company of Sanguinary Guard uh, and things like that. I think I like what they've done because the Space Marine book was very, very incredibly bloated. But at the same time, I don't like that you need both books. So we've got Marnius Kalgar and the Victrix Honor Guard in here. Uh, we've also got Chief Librarian Tagirius and, of course, his new rules. Um... Actually, he's got a uh, hood of hellfire. When a psychic test is taken for this model, you can reroll the result. When a psychic test or neither which test is taken for this model, add one to the total. Uh, and then, of course, we've got master of prescience as well, um, which he had previously. He can attempt to um, cast two, deny two, and he knows three from either the library's discipline or three. From the Indominus Discipline. You can't split that. That's very important. Uh, we've got Chapman Cassius as well. And of course he's also got um, the Litanies of Battle as well. So he can actually pray. Uh, he's got Litanies of Hate automatically in his War Scroll. Um, but yeah. He has had his relevant updates. We've got Captain Sicarius and Sergeant Teleon. As well as Sergeant Kronos as well. From what I can see, I mean, I'm not an Ultramarine player, but from what I can see, there has been uh, very minimal changes. Nothing that I can actually notice. Uh, we've got the Chapter Ancient, Chapter Champion, 
honor guard and tyrannic war veterans as well and that's all of the units that's in so there's not a massive host of, of units there but obviously all the characters and stuff are there um so in relation to the abilities you still get scions of gilliman of course um and all of the other space marine rules but the warlord traits warlord traits adept of the codex um is still refund command points on a five plus and it's specifically quotes as well you can only have one command point uh, refunded per battle round by this warlord trait Master of Strategy once per battle. If this Warlord is on the battlefield, you can select an Ultramarine unit within six of them. And until the end of the battle round, when a model um, in that unit makes an attack, the Tactical Doctrine is considered to be active. So that's pretty cool. Especially if you've got something like um, those Hurricane Bolters on Centurions that you're going to be running now. Uh, Calm Under Fire. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by an ultramarine model in a unit within 6 inches of the Warlord, uh, during a turn in which that model fell back, do not subtract the minus 1. So that's pretty decent. Paragon of War. When resolving an attack made by this Warlord, an unmodified wound roll of a 6 inflicts one mortal wound in addition to any other damage. We've got Nobility Made Manifest. Friendly Ultramarine Infantry and Biker units can perform heroic interventions as if they were characters whilst they're within 6 inches of the Warlord. It's okay. And the Warden of McCrag. This Warlord can perform heroic intervention if there are any enemy units within 6 instead of 3. And of course you can pile in with the 6. I think Mastery of Strategy and Adept of the Codex are probably the two better ones there. Especially if you use the, um, the stratagem to give a second warlord trait. I don't think that's a bad shout at all. So, relics of McCrag are ultramarine specific relics. And then the special issue war gear are successor chapter relics. So, uh, the relics of McCrag. We've got the soldier's blade. Uh, it's for a model equipped with a power sword, mastercraft, a power sword or combat knife. Um, it's strength plus one, minus four, two damage. It's okay. Uh, we've got the Sanctic Halo, which gives the, the captain or chapter master a three up invulnerable save, and you can attempt to deny one psychic power. We've got the standard of McCrag and Violet, um, ancient only, add one to the attack characteristics of friendly ultramarine models whilst they're within six, and they automatically pass morale if they're within 12. Armour of Kono, uh, Terminators only, uh, gives you a 4 plus and vulnerable save when resolving an attack against that model, half the damage inflicted. That's okay, that might be okay for a librarian because, I mean, captains and chaplains already have the 4 up anyway. Uh, Helm of Censure, uh, when resolving an attack made by a model with this relic, you can re-roll hit, hit roll of a 1 and wound rolls of a 1. When resolving an attack by uh, made by that model against an Adeptus Astartes or Heretic Astartes units, add one to the hit and wound rolls as well. So that's okay. Uh, Vengeance of Ultramar is a bolt. Wow. <laughs> it's a storm bolt. It's rapid fire four. That's eight shots. And when resolving an attack made with this weapon against a unit other than a vehicle, you can re-roll re the wound rolls. That's brilliant. And then we've got the Tarantian Cloak. A model with this relic has a 5 of invulnerable. And at the start of your moving phase, the model regains D3 lost wounds. So there's some alright ones there. Definitely some alright ones. Uh, special issue war gear is for... Um, you can still take this if you're an ultramarine, but this is for uh, the successor chapters. We've got the Adamantine Mantle. Uh, when the model with the relic loses a wound, roll a d6 and on a 5 plus, the wound is not lost. Artificer Armor uh, gives you a 2 plus normal save and a 5 up in vulnerable save. Mastercrafted Weapon, add 1 to the damage. Uh, digital Weapons. <laughs> a nice little throwback there, a 7th edition actually. When a model with this relic fights, it can make one additional attack using a close combat weapon profile. Uh, when resolving the attack, if the hit is scored, the target suffers one mortal wound uh, and the attack sequence ends. So, it's okay. 
Reliquy of Vengeance. Once per battle at the start of the fight phase, model with this relic can reveal the reliquy. When it does, until the end of the phase, add one to the attack characteristics of models in friendly chapter units whilst they're within six inches. Seal of Oath. At the start of the first battle round, before the first turn begins, select one enemy unit. You can reroll hit rolls and wound rolls for attacks made by models in friendly chapter units against that enemy unit whilst the friendly units are within six of the uh, relic so that's okay hell fury bolts uh when you give a model this relic select one bolt weapon that model is equipped with when the bearer shoots with that weapon you can choose for it to fire a hell fury bolt if you do so only make one attack with that weapon but when resolving the attack if it scores a hit it inflicts one mortal wound and the attack sequence ends and then we've got the Sunrath Pistol, uh, range 12, pistol 2, strength 8, minus 3, 2 damage. So some pretty cool relics there, and I think at least you're going to be able to see a few different variations of the lists and stuff now. Stratagems though, we've got eight different, uh, 16 different stratagems even, 8 per page. So these are all Ultramarine specific ones, and of course the... Um, Oh, what they're called. Successor chapters. However, something that I did notice, uh, and this is also the case for detachment rules. If your army is battleforged and includes any Ultramarines detachments, excluding auxiliary support detachments, you have access to the stratagem shown here. Uh, so basically, auxiliary support detachments don't get the chapter rules and do not get access to stratagems. So, we've got Martial Precision. Uh, use a stratagem when an ultramarine unit in your army is shooting. When resolving the attack, do not make a hit roll. It automatic. Wow. Okay, that's good. And it's not even infantry unit. Yeah, that wow. 1 CP for that. Oh, okay, I'm just going to make this last cannon that's at minus three to hit, automatically hit. Wow. Uh, Vengeance for Kalth. Uh, use this strategy when an ultramarine unit from your army is chosen to fight in the fight phase. Until the end of the phase, when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model that is targeting a word bearer's unit, you can reroll hit and wound rolls. It's specific, but there we go. Inspiring Command, use this stratagem at the start of your shooting phase or the fight phase. Select an Ultramarine Chapter Master, Captain or Lieutenant. Until the end of the phase, the range of that model's aura abilities is increased by 3. And Cycle of War, uh, use this stratagem at the start of the battle round if an Ultramarine's Warlord from your army is on the battlefield. And the Assault Doctrine was active during the previous battle round. The... Uh, Currently active doctrine has changed so that the Devastator doctrine is now active. So you can actually move that one forward. Uh, and of course with access to the stratagems in the Space Marine book you can hold it in place for an additional turn uh, as well. Rapid redeployments uh, is 2 CP. Uh, and you can select up to 3 units, remove them from the battlefield and set them up again as described uh, in the deployment. And that's before the first battle round. Uh, Sons of Gilliman for 1 CP. Uh, infantry or biker units from your army is chosen to shoot or fight. If that unit has the troops battlefield roll until the end of the phase when resolving an attack made by that unit, you can re-roll a hit roll. Otherwise, until the end of the phase when resolving an attack made by that unit, you can re-roll a hit roll of a 1. I don't get that. Yeah, that's a little bit unclear. Uh, Avenge the Fallen. Uh, use the stratagem when an ultramarine unit from your army is destroyed as a result of an attack made by an enemy unit. Until the end of the battle when resolving an attack made by ultramarines models from your army that end against that enemy unit, you get to re-roll hit rolls of a 1. Courage and Honor. Use the stratagem at the start of the morale phase. Add 1 to the leadership characteristic of ultramarine models from your army until the end of the phase. They already get plus one. Do they really need plus two? I don't know. 
tactical expertise 2CP, use this strategy at the start of your movement phase if the tactical doctrine is active. Until the start of your next battle round when resolving an attack made with rapid fire or assault weapons by ultramarine models from your army and a modified wound roll of a 6, the armor penetration characteristic of that weapon is improved by an additional 1 for the attack. That's alright. In fact, that's, that's very good, actually. Because if you consider you've got the Tactical Doctrine active as well, which gives you an additional uh, minus one, and then suddenly you can get your bolt rifles at minus three on sixes. Fall back and re-engage. This is one slash two CP. Use a stratagem when an Ultramarine unit from your army has fallen back. This stratagem costs one CP if that unit has the Codex Discipline Chapter Tactic. Otherwise, it costs 2 CP. The unit can shoot and charge this turn. If that unit was a Codex Discipline Chapter Tactic, the hit roll penalty for the tactic for falling back and shooting does not apply. That's okay. Um, that's actually going to be pretty big for Centurions. Or Regressors. I like that. Uh, defensive focus. Use this stratagem for an ultramarine unit from your army uh, is chosen to, as a target of a charge. Select up to three other friendly ultramarine units that are more than an inch away from any enemy. Wow! And within six of the targeted unit, the selected units can fire Overwatch. Wow! Talk about stealing from the Tau. Whoa! Oh, that's uh, that that's massive. Exemplar of the Chapter 1 CP. Uh, use this stratagem after nominating an Ultramarines model that is not a named character to be your Warlord. You can generate one additional Warlord trait for them. This must be an Ultramarines Warlord trait, and each Warlord trait in your army must be unique. Uh, you can only use this stratagem once. So you can actually give someone two Warlord traits. Uh, squad Doctrines, use this stratagem at the start of your moving phase, select an ultramarine infantry or biker unit from your army, then select either Devastator, Tactical or Assault Doctrine. Until the start of your next movement phase, that unit gains the bonus of the Combat Doctrine instead of the Active Doctrine. So that's very Death Watch-esque, um, having that flexibility to move between them. And I hope that, you know, the fact that the Death Watch aren't getting any of this new stuff, means that they're getting reworked because based on that I think you know there's a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff in here that I like. Uh honored sergeant uh use this stratagem before the battle select an ultramarine model from your army that has the word sergeant in their profile. That model can have one of the following special issue war gear relics uh even though they are not a character. Uh mastercrafted weapon, digital weapons, hell fury bolt, sunrath pistol, all of the relics uh, your army includes must be different and given to different models. Tactical Insight 2 CP. Use this stratagem after generating your tactical objectives if Ultramarine Warlord from your army is on the battlefield. Immediately discard your tactical objectives. For each tactical objective that you discarded, generate one more. You can only use this stratagem if the mission you are playing uses tactical objectives, otherwise, you can only, you can only use this stratagem once per battle. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And then 1 CP honoured by McCrag. Use this stratagem after nominating a model from your Ultramarine successor chapter to be your Warlord. You can give one relic of McCrag to a character um, from your army that is drawn from a successor chapter instead of special issue war gear. If you do, replace the Ultramarine's keyword in all instances on the relic with the chapter keyword. So for 1 CP you can take a relic of McCrag on a successor chapter. So, do you know what? Whilst I was a little bit annoyed at this, I am liking some of the changes that they're putting in place. Uh, the last thing I'm going to cover is the Indominus Discipline, uh, which is the site powers that the Ultramarines are going to get access to. So we've got Precognition, which is a casting value of 5. Uh, it gives the Psyker a 5 plus invulnerable save. Uh, and when resolving an attack made against this Psyker, subtract one from the hit rolls. So that's okay. We've got Scryer's Gaze, which is a casting value of seven. Uh, if manifested in your army is battleforged, uh, you can choose to immediately gain one command point. 
If you choose not to, then once this turn, when resolving an attack made by a model from a friendly Ultramarine unit whilst the unit is within 18 of the Psyker, you can re-roll the hit and wound rolls, or, or you can re-roll the hit roll, wound roll, or damage roll. Uh, telepathic Assault, um, cast on value 7, enemy unit within 24, roll 2d6 and add 2 to the result. The unit suffers one mortal wound for each point by which the total exceeds the highest leadership characteristic of that model's unit. Storm of the Emperor's Wrath, cast on value of 6, select the nearest enemy unit within 18 uh, and visible. Roll 1d6 for each model in that unit and for each roll of a 6, it suffers one mortal wound. Hello, Horde Killer Orc Boys. <laughs> Psychic Shackles, cast and value of 6, select an enemy unit within 18 and visible. Until the start of your next Psychic Phase, halve the movement characteristic rounding up of models in the unit, and when a charge roll or advance roll is made, subtract one from that roll. A unit cannot be affected by both this Psychic Power and the Tenebrous Curse Psychic Power at the same time. And then we've got Empiric Channeling, uh, cast a value of 5, um, select one other friendly Ultramarines library model within 12 of this Psyker, until the end of the Psychic phase when a Psychic test is taken for that model, add 2 to the total, uh, and that model does not suffer Perils of the Warp on a double 1 or a double 6. That's handy if you're running multiple Librarians. Fun little fact, there's also an Ultramarine name generator in the back of this as well. Now... I am quite impressed with this and it feels like they've definitely taken a little bit more time with, you know, fleshing out Space Marines. Uh, I do like it and I'm actually quite excited to see what they do with the other chapters. Um, I appreciate, obviously, there's only so many stratagems that can come out and, you know, they're going to get renamed. There's a lot of copy and paste in particular with the Gene Sailor cult book, but I am very, you know, I like this. Um... I just, I don't like them being split, but I like that the Ultramarines have got all, you know, all this flavour. Uh, so I think Ollie is going to be a very, very happy guy. Uh, and I think we will definitely have to get the Ultramarines back on the channel a couple of times uh, over the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Um, but that is the review of Codex Ultramarines. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Please go and check out the rest of the channel uh, and we'll see you again very soon.